everyone, my name is Sydney Brown, financial coach and budgeting expert here to help you spend money with confidence. This channel is for single black women who feel overwhelmed when they think about their financial future, confused when they think about managing their money, and shame when they think about their financial situation. I'm here to help you create and stick to a budget so that you can stop living paycheck to paycheck and start spending money with confidence. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss another video. So y'all, I had the nerve, the nerve, to get a dog last month. They tell me it gets better, but right now, I'm in the thick of it. It's a process. That's what they say. Everybody keeps telling me it gets better, but right now, I'm in the thick of it. He's peeing everywhere. He's pooping. He's barking at me. The dog's trying to get to know me. I'm trying to get to know the dog. It's, it's, it's a lot. We're, we in the training, in the leash training, the crate training, and all the training, all the types of the training. It's just a lot. Like I'm, in a, I'm in a potty training schedule. You gotta make sure you get home at a certain time. You can't stay at work late to do your work. It's just, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot. So with all of that said, getting a puppy is expensive regardless of how you decide to get a dog. So I wanted to make a video about how to afford a dog and what are some things you can do to prepare in advance for having a new puppy. The way that I structured this video is eight expenses to consider before buying a dog. So obviously the first thing to consider and I think what most people think about when they are preparing to get a dog is the initial seed money of buying the dog. Either there's an adoption cost there is a um, initial purchase price for the dog if you go through a breeder. Whatever the amount of money that you actually need to physically get the dog is the number one expense that you're gonna need for buying the dog. And I'm gonna call that for the sake of this video, seed money. So save the amount of money that you need for your initial seed money. It doesn't matter if it's $400, it doesn't matter if it's $1,000, however much you need for the initial, initial purchase price of the dog, save that money in advance before buying the dog. The second expense to consider is how far you're willing to drive for your puppy. So I really wanted a, a doodle of sorts. It didn't necessarily have to be a Bernadoodle, but I did want a doodle. And so the closest breeder that I was able to find for our situation was in Pennsylvania. So we actually ended up driving to Pennsylvania for my doggy. Um, so consider how far you are willing to drive and factor that into the initial purchase price of the dog. So if you're driving to California, I'm just gonna make something up crazy, whatever. If you're driving really far for your dog, consider the travel expenses of the dog when you add that to the initial purchase price of your dog. Can you get a dog for cheaper in a like more local location? Because if so, then you could save money just by buying local. Um, but if not, if all things considered, it is actually cheaper to travel to get the dog, consider how far you're willing to drive for your puppy. Okay, so in addition to your travel expenses potentially for getting a dog and your initial seed money, you will also need to consider creating a sinking fund for your dog. Because in addition to all those things, you are gonna need things for your house as well. You're gonna need potentially a crate, you're gonna need leash, you're gonna need collar, you're gonna need bowls, all sorts of things, um, toys, all sorts of things before you actually um, purchase a dog. And I think it's better to get these in advance so that you aren't spending the whole day um, with your new dog, going to the random stores to make sure you get these things. Prepare your house in advance for all of these things, but also know that you will spend money really throughout the first month buying different toys and things that you didn't think that you need. For example, when you initially buy the dog, if you are getting a dog that is going to grow, which my dog is supposed to be 30 pounds allegedly by the end of its growth cycle, we will see what it actually turns out to be. But if you are buying a growing dog, um, it is likely that you will go through a collar and a leash within the first month because first of all, it's a puppy, so it's growing. So within the first month, it grew a pound a week. And so by the time that it was like four months old, it was about 14 pounds from 
from 10 pounds. It was 10 pounds when we initially got it and it grew to 14 um, over the course of the first month. So we went through a leash and a collar and we had to get another leash because the dog is teething and he chewed through the initial leash that we got. So I think it's important to remember here that whatever you get for the dog in the beginning, he will likely, she, he, it, they, them, will chew through whatever you get them initially so don't be so super invested in whatever you get them initially because it was it is likely that you will have to replace it for one and two it is likely that they will chew through whatever you get them they won't treat it as well as you expect them to so keep that in mind when you're buying your initial things for your puppy okay so another thing to consider when you are buying a dog is um whatever annual maintenance you will need for your dog start a sinking fund for this as well so for example i really wanted a doodle i really had to have a doodle puppy and mainly because i didn't want the dog shedding all over the house i didn't want to have hair all over my clothes and you know that was just something i really did not want uh, all over my furniture things like that um so for me that comes with an added expense of annual grooming the dog is going to have to be groomed um every six to eight weeks depending on how fast the hair grows so it's important to consider before getting a dog knowing the types of annual maintenance you will need for your dog the next expense you're going to want to consider is a puppy emergency fund so you know like i said i'm in the thick of it having a brand new puppy right now he chews everything so they say a quote that i um, saw online that I feel like is very true is dogs experience new environments through their mouths So they are picking up everything with their mouth. They are chewing things. They're chewing the remote They are chewing, you know anything that's on the floor They're gonna eat it and sometimes whatever they eat is not going to be Healthy for them not you know, it's gonna basically be a vet bill So keep in mind that there are gonna be emergencies that happen and so you'll want to prepare your budget in advance for any type of emergency that could happen because your dog swallows something that it's not supposed to be eating. Next uh, thing to consider is pet insurance. Um, you never know. You never know. A lot of people that I spoke to um, before getting a dog decided or told me that pet insurance is a very beneficial thing to have. So I'm gonna recommend having um, pet insurance. Number seven is obedience training. So right now I'm in manners class with my puppy and um, I would recommend getting um, some type of obedience or manners class for your dog. One, it's a really good bonding time for you to spend time with your new dog, helping it get to know you and you get to know them. But also, I really think that when you have a good, well-trained dog, it makes for a better experience for having a dog. You can drop your dog off with other people and know that it will be a good dog instead of it terrorizing everyone around you that it knows. So regardless of whether you adopt or um, you do actually go through a breeder for a dog, something to consider is um, going through obedience training, and that is going to be an added expense, so keep that in mind. Last expense to consider before buying a dog is how you are going to keep the dog walked with, while you're at work. Whether you work from home or you are someone who goes to work, you're going to have to find something in the first few months if you get a puppy um, to make sure that your dog is taken care of during the day, whether or not it's um, dog walkers or you're going to drop it off with a family member who can take care of the dog while you are away. And if you do decide to go with a dog walker, it is going to cost money. And even if you do get community care, like people um, in your community, whether it's neighbors or friends and family members who will take care of your dog, um, you will need to pay for that. Um, you know, unless your friend or family is willing to do it for free. But even still, you should probably compensate them even a little bit. Um, when I lived in Maryland, I was a dog walker from my um, boss at the time. She wasn't like my actual boss, but she was kind of like a supervisory figure to me. Um, and I loved walking her dog and it was always great when I would get a little extra money um, when she would uh, pay me to walk her dog. And it was very easy, just like an hour going over there, um, taking care of her dog. And I loved it, I loved the dog, it was so cute. Um, and it probably is one of the reasons I will consider having a dog now because 
you know, I really love that dog. <laughs> All right, that's my method for affording a dog, how to afford a dog. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss another video. Let, like this video to let me know that this is something you are interested in. Depending on how many likes the video is, gets, that's how I decide whether or not I should continue to make those types of videos or not. So um, please like this video if you are interested in the video, you enjoyed this type of content, you would like me to make more videos around buying and taking care of a dog, let me know. All right, that's, that's it for me today, so bye!